Hello, my name is Will Barker. I'm a PhD student at the University of Cambridge and the Kavli Institute of Cosmology in Cambridge. I'm going to talk about dark energy and radiation in novel gauge gravity theories. So I'll start off with some context of uh, what the gauge gravity theories are. Um, general relativity is, uh, of course, already a kind of gauge theory. It's a gauge theory of diffeomorphisms. Uh, we have a gauge potential, which is the metric, and a field strength tensor, which is the Riemann curvature tensor. And we can form the usual Einstein-Hilbert uh, Lagrangian from this. But if we wanted to uh, expand the uh, symmetry group, we could uh, also consider uh, rotations, Lorentz rotations. And this will give us the Poincaré group. There are going to be two uh, potential fields, uh, the tetrads and the spin connection, and two field strength tensors. So you have the Riemann tensor and the torsion tensor. If you form the same Einstein-Hilbert Lagrangian, you end up with something called Einstein-Cartan theory. And uh, a particular problem with this is that uh, the, the torsion is algebraically bound to uh, fermionic spin sources. So this is, this is quite unnatural, but nonetheless, Einstein-Cartan theory is uh, a very popular uh, minimal alternative to uh, general relativity. So uh, we don't have to stop there in terms of constructing the Lagrangian. We can consider a, a far more uh, general action. We can add on uh, the six uh, quadratic curvature invariants and three quadratic torsion invariants. So this is the general uh, quadratic Poincaré gauge theory. Um, along with the linear invariants, it gives us 10 dimensionless uh, coupling constants. And uh, it's quite nice because it has a, a, a Yang-Mills uh, form, so it's quite reminiscent of the standard model. Uh, the field strength tensors in Poincaré gauge theory are first order in the derivatives of the gauge fields. You don't, you don't get that in GR, obviously. Um, so if you want to uh, examine the quantum field theory of the Poincaré gauge theory, um, you'd want to invert the Lagrangian to find the propagator. In the linearized theory, that uh, becomes impossible if the dimensionless coupling constants obey certain relations. So the Lagrangian becomes singular, you can't invert it. Uh, and this gives rise to a critical case that has to be considered separately. So recently, uh, an exhaustive survey was performed of uh, all the critical cases in PGT. There are nearly 2,000 of those. In uh, 450 of these cases, you can also get rid of ghosts and tachyons with further constraints on the couplings. Uh, and you can also uh, ask that these theories be power counting renormalizable. Um, so we take 33 of the, uh, uh, the best uh, of these cases, and um, we've listed them in this table. So this column is the uh, defining uh, critical uh, case conditions. And we have uh, unitarity constraints, and then uh, spin parity breakdown of the uh, particle spectrum. Uh, this is just an estimate in, in these columns uh, for the uh, massless modes. We don't know precisely what the uh, spin parity is of uh, massless modes, uh, but we know what it could be and what it uh, could definitely not be. But with uh, massive modes, we know precisely what the spin parity is of those, those particles. So uh, the first thing to, to notice about uh, this table really is uh, the fact that the um, linear invariant, the Einstein-Hilbert term, has been... Uh, eliminated by the QFT requirements from all of the novel theories. So these are purely quadratic uh, theories of gravity, only quadratic invariants in torsion and curvature. So the QFT gives us uh, a large number of theories to, to test and uh, experiment with. We want to look at the phenomenology and we will uh, use cosmology as uh, a testing ground for that. So the curvature ansatz is just going to be the FRW metric uh, here, and we uh, consider a general spatial curvature K. And uh, the torsion tensor is uh, if, you, if you impose the cosmological principle, you find that uh, you cannot have more than two degrees of freedom. These are the scalar and pseudo-scalar uh, torsion. So if you look at the cosmological field equations, it turns out that the uh, quadratic uh, Riemann coupling constants, there are only three combinations which actually feature in those field equations, three linear combinations, and um, only two linear combinations of the quadratic torsion coupling constants. The uh, Einstein-Hilbert term has a, a unique effect, so we don't need to define anything new for that. If you look at the cosmological field equation, something that you can notice is that if, uh, if you apply two very simple uh, parameter constraints, you can actually eliminate the spatial curvature k from the dynamics completely. So what that means is the universe could be flat, open or closed, but the uh, expansion rate would not be able to see that. It would not affect either the expansion rate, the Hubble number, or the um, uh, torsion uh, evolution. We call this phenomenon K-screening, um, and it's, it's not necessarily a complete disaster because 
in uh, Lambda CDM, we uh, normally take the universe to be uh, flat anyway. We don't have a tremendous amount of evidence to suggest otherwise. So we now group the, the 33 uh, theories uh, according to their cosmological phenomenology, and that's given in this, this map here. So on the, on the right hand side of this map, you can actually recover a, a lot of the results in the literature which pertain to theories which contain only uh, massive particles. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a very substantial literature on, on Poincaré gauge theory cosmology. And on the left hand side, you can see um, this nice cube shape of, uh, of constraints. This, uh, these, these theories are apparently novel, they do not appear in the literature, and um, strangely they're all k-screened. So we're going to pick um, a Goldilocks theory from this, uh, this cube of, of novel, novel theories. Um, we're going to pick a theory which is not so uh, constrained that it's going to be very boring, and it's not so unconstrained that it's going to be difficult to work with, and this is the, the class 3c theory. In terms of its particle content, it has two uh, massless degrees of freedom, which uh, could be tentatively identified with uh, the graviton of Weinberg and Witten. And uh, I'll skip over uh, the details of how we actually perform the uh, analysis of the phenomenology. Um, the important takeaway point is that uh, it turns out that this theory can actually behave very similarly to, to GR. If you uh, include in the matter Lagrangian uh, dust, uh, radiation, and uh, dark energy in the form of a cosmological constant, then the Hubble number will evolve precisely as it would in, in GR if we impose only one extra parameter constraint. And this, this is not an example of fine tuning because this constraint is numerically extremely natural. So that's all very well and good, um, but now we've actually eliminated all of the extra phenomenology, and so we, we have no new physics. We want to uh, take a step back from this and, uh, and give the, the theory some predictive power. So um, this particular solution, which is exactly the same as GR, we call the correspondence solution. And uh, we want to relax this a little bit. Uh, again, I'll skip over the, the details of uh, how, we, how we relax it. Um, but if you, if you perturb around the correspondence solution, in terms of the um, evolution of the Hubble number, it's the same as adding to general relativity an extra matter component whose equation of state parameter depends on the dominant cosmic fluid equation of state parameter. So this is, uh, this is effectively a, a tracker matter um, model. Now at late times, the tracker matter dilutes away extremely quickly and you could safely ignore it. At early times, uh, the equation of state parameter of the tracker matter is equal to one third when uh, the universe is radiation dominated. So this is quite nice. It means that there is effectively extra radiation in the early universe, or that's what the uh, Hubble number sees. Um, and so you can package this effect uh, roughly into uh, an increase in the number of relativistic uh, degrees of freedom in, in Lambda CDM. That's what we, uh, we provide down here. So the consequences of this are that uh, you, you will boost the early expansion rate um, you'll increase the, the Hubble number, you'll bring forward epochs of uh, equality and recombination, um, and you'll shrink the sound horizon. And this is potentially quite interesting because obviously we have uh, problems with the Hubble tension at the moment, um, and a possible solution to this is to add dark radiation or extra relativistic degrees of freedom in the, the early universe. There are various problems with this, of course, uh, so we can only reduce it to a few sigma. Um, and. Uh, there are, there are also various problems with uh, collisions with Big Bang nucleosynthesis constraints as well, um, but it's it's still quite a, quite a, a popular model. So now I'll uh, present a, a far more powerful way of dealing with the uh, cosmologies of uh, quadratic torsion theories in general. Um, already we have. Uh, we have this Lagrangian, which contains quadratic invariants, and it's cast in terms of tetrads and spin connections and torsion. This is not the terms that people like to work with. Um, people would prefer to have uh, GR and then add to this some extra fields, um, which could be scalars, vectors, and so on, um, in a sort of uh, effective field theory model. So to do this, uh, we note two things about Poincaré gauge theory. Um, the field equations are going to be maximally second order, and also, there are only two extra degrees of freedom um, beyond GR, which are given by the scalar and pseudo-scalar torsion. So an ideal ansatz for us is going to be uh, the 
by Galileo, covariant by Galileo, um, in which we're just going to invent two new uh, scalar fields and relate these to the scalar and pseudo-scalar uh, torsion according to these equations. The precise formula of uh, the relation is given by requiring different things to move in certain ways under conformal transformations, but we could ignore those details. Um, now, generally, the by Galileo, uh, if you add uh, extra higher order terms, you will need to compensate them with counter terms to satisfy the Ostrogradsky theorem. Uh, fortunately, uh, in order to use the by Galileo to replicate quadratic torsion theory, you don't need those counter terms. Um, in fact, all you need uh, are G2 and G4, which are arbitrary functions of the two scalars and the, the kinetic uh, terms. G4 is multiplied by Ricci scalar. And then you add to this, instead of higher order uh, terms and counter terms, you add to this um, uh, an extra third uh, scalar and a, a neutral vector, which is a bit annoying. But it turns out that the way in which you need to add these is uh, quite analogous to the uh, model of Lorentz violating vector fields. That's quite interesting. It means that the, those fields are actually going to be non-dynamical. They're just going to act as constraints and you can directly integrate them out, but you do that at the expense of the G2 and G4 functions being uh, polynomials. So we will actually end up with a, a non-canonical uh, scalar tensor theory. That, uh, that theory is, is what we write down here in this Lagrangian. It is uh, fairly easy to read, uh, much easier than the, the action we presented at the beginning. Um, what you have is some function of uh, the two scalars multiplied by the Ricci scalar. Um, so you know that this theory is going to uh, exist in the Jordan conformal frame. We also have some kinetic, uh, canonical kinetic terms for those scalars, a highly non-canonical kinetic term where this vector j is defined down here. We also have mass terms and uh, quartic potentials. So it's interesting to note that uh, we took a, a Lagrangian which had uh, quadratic uh, curvature and uh, torsion invariance in it. And um, if, we, if we want to form uh, this, this analog in terms of the metric, we actually don't need these quadratic terms anymore. It's all done in terms of the Ricci scalar. And we call this theory the, the metrical analog of uh, the general quadratic torsion gravity. So let's consider the metrical analogues of some well-known uh, torsion theories, which are special cases of the general quadratic torsion theory, the general Poincaré gauge theory. Let's consider teleparallelism. So teleparallelism is uh, dynamically equivalent to general relativity, uh, but it takes place in Weizenbach space-time. So the assumption is that there is only torsion and there is no curvature, which is quite strange. Um, but it's also quite popular these days if you look at the archive. So we ask, what, what is the metrical analog of teleparallelism? So we impose the constraints on the metrical analog, and uh, we find that we have the Ricci scalar. Uh, and added to that uh, some scalar uh, terms, non-canonical scalar terms. But the Weizenbach uh, space-time assumption means that you can actually write those off on shell. So um, you, uh, you ask that the uh, spin connection be a, a pure gauge, and uh, this, the, these terms vanish. So you just get the Einstein-Hilbert's uh, Lagrangian back, which is quite satisfying because uh, teleparallelism tele tele maps directly uh, to uh, the Einstein-Hilbert Lagrangian. So you know that uh, it's just going to give you exactly the same cosmological phenomenology as general relativity, which makes perfect sense. So what about Einstein-Cartan theory? Well. Einstein-Cartan theory uh, is also dynamically equivalent to general relativity if there are no fermionic spin sources, so if the torsion vanishes. So we ask, what is the metrical analog of Einstein-Cartan theory? Um, and we immediately are in big trouble because the uh, linear invariant, the Ricci scalar term, gets eliminated from the metrical analog immediately, and you just end up with this non-canonical scalar field term. This is very strange. You ask, where, where did your gravity go? Uh, it actually turns out to be okay because this particular uh, form is called a um, uh, quadratic Cuscuton field. And if you evaluate the equations of motion of this field, you'll uh, get the Friedman equations of cosmology back. So it does work still, but it's a very strange perspective on Einstein-Cartan theory. So now let's return to the uh, novel theories. We spent a while talking about uh, class 3C and its uh, replication of GR up to optional dark radiation component. 
that's pick a more general uh, theory, which is class 2a. It also has the two uh, massless degrees of freedom, which we could possibly associate with the, the graviton, which we know exists in nature. And we also have a pseudoscalar, a uh, massive particle. Now, <clears throat> we want to uh, move the metrical analog of this theory into the Einstein frame, because it's just easier to work with. So we, we do the conformal transformation and we reparameterize the fields into z and zeta to make this a little bit uh, easier to read. So then it turns out in the Einstein frame we just have general relativity plus a canonical z field plus a, a non-canonical zeta field, which is a quadratic cuscuton and it's weighted by this omega of z function. Omega of z actually happens to be the difference between the conformal Einstein and Jordan frames, which is quite convenient. The potential of the canonical field uh, is positive definite, and that's fixed by the unitarity conditions that we got from QFT earlier. Because of that, we know that generically it's going to act as if it's boosting the um, cosmological constant in the theory. It's going to act as a, a dark radiation term. So let's make uh, that, um, sorry, dark uh, energy term. Let's make the, the dark energy uh, a bit more precise. So we consider uh, a strange example, which is, what if your matter Lagrangian contained only a cosmological constant, but it was negative? So you can get such things out of string theory, and they usually cause problems uh, because the universe could not undergo accelerated expansion in that case. But in the physical Jordan frame, re remember that uh, the theory wants to be interpreted in the Jordan frame. You actually find that you are, you are forced to get a, a de Sitter expansion in this case. Um, the rate of that de Sitter expansion is characterized by an effective uh, cosmological constant, which is a function only of the dimensionless coupling uh, parameters and the Planck mass. So it's uh, not a function of the uh, magnitude of the negative external cosmological constant. So this is, this is quite odd, um, but we can confirm that it, uh, it holds. Um, so we can do a dynamical systems analysis on the theory in the Einstein frame. Um, so this is the two-dimensional phase space of the canonical uh, scalar field Z. This attractor state here uh, corresponds to the uh, de Sitter expansion in exactly the position that we would expect to find it. So now let's look at something a little bit more conventional. Um, we will ask what happens if the Jordan and Einstein frames coincide. So this is fairly easy to in, uh, interpret. In that case, um, we know that the, the cuscuton is going to vanish because the difference between the frames is equal to the weighting of the cuscuton. Um, the solution is actually given by both the z and zeta fields uh, going to constants, and so the uh, canonical kinetic term of the uh, z field uh, vanishes as well, and we just get gr plus um, some positive definite uh, potential in our Lagrangian. So it's quite obvious that this is just going to increase the, um, the cosmological constant at this point. It's also obvious that solution to this uh, um, Lagrangian is going to be uh, the, the usual um, uh, solutions to the Friedman equations. Um, and it should not be a surprise that this is actually the same as the, the correspondence solution uh, that we mentioned earlier. Um, so we can check that, we can perturb this solution a little bit, and uh, we find that we get this extra component model um, with an equation of state parameter, uh, which uh, depends on the equation of state parameter of whatever is in um, the matter Lagrangian here. Um, and again, uh, when the, the universe is dominated by radiation, the extra component looks like radiation. Uh, I should add that the difference between the, the class 3C and class 2A uh, models, this, uh, this extra pseudoscalar uh, massive particle, um, all it does is add this potential term. So uh, in, in class A, you will not get uh, any extra dark radiation, uh, dark energy. So in summary, uh, there were recently discovered uh, a, a large number of new quadratic torsion theories uh, which are uh, potentially unitary and uh, renormalizable by power counting. We systematically surveyed the uh, infrared cosmology of these theories, the background cosmology, uh, and we found that despite this strange K-screening phenomenon, um, the uh, dynamics of the, the cosmology actually replicates uh, general relativity. Um, you can uh, add uh, an optional component of dark radiation in the early universe, and it's possible that uh, this could be applied to the Hubble tension problem. 
We then uh, developed a uh, general mapping from uh, quadratic torsion theories to the, the by Galileo and found a new mo motivation for the Cuscuton theory. Um, and we used this formalism to show that uh, the, the theories, not only do they uh, contain an optional dark radiation component, but you can use them to generate dark uh, energy and uh, asymptotic de Sitter states, uh, even if the cosmological constant is zero or actually negative. Uh, we are currently performing the uh, Hamiltonian analysis on these theories to see if the unitarity holds in the strong field regime. Um, future work may uh, address uh, the, the issue of whether or not theories are actually renormalizable, um, so a perturbative renormalization, what Takahashi identities, and, and so forth. Um, but there's plenty still to do at the, uh, at the tree level. Um, so you can uh, ask, do these theories uh, account for inflation? Um, they, uh, they certainly uh, have, uh, have the parameters left to... Uh, uh, to, to address that and um, can they uh, can they perform well under the theory of cosmological perturbations so thank you for listening and uh, I'd, I'd welcome uh, your questions thank you